SRS reports or DBA reports. What we will be looking to doing is to automate the installation of this using PowerShell. But for right now, what you'll find in the zip that you download is a samples folder uh, with a reports folder in it and SSRS. In there, you'll find a DBA database solution, a Microsoft Visual Studio solution. When you open that, you'll find a number of uh, shared data sources and a number of reports. To install it into your environment, you need to change the data source for your DBA database. Change the data source to be the server you've got DBA reports installed and the name of the database that you've uh, created. You'll also need to tell the solution where your uh, SSRS report server is by right clicking on the project and clicking on properties and then change the target server URL to the server that you're going to use and if you wish to change the target report folder or the data sets or data sources folder then you do that there as well. Once you've done that you simply right click and hit deploy. As you can see I've already got um, the reports deployed so it's not uh, deploying any of my data sets. And once it's deployed successfully, you'll end up with something like this. As you can see, this is uh, SSRS 2016, but the reports will work on any SSRS from 2008 upwards. So we've got a data sources folder, which has got our DBA database data source in it. We've also got our data sets and a number of reports. Our DBA team normally start with the quick view, which is a good place to show what's happening when they come in in the morning. So you can see that we've got how many disks have got less than 10% free, a number of failed jobs today gauge, how many errors and warnings we've got in our log files, and how many databases have not been used since the last reboot. We do this by analyzing the index uh, read and write DMVs. If you click on the number of failed jobs it will take you straight through to the uh, agent job server report which is a roll-up of all of the the agent jobs per server with the ones that have failed sorted to the top. As you can see that's split up by environment as you have named your environment that's most useful to yourself uh, I've gone for uh, development environment, integration environment, pre-prod, production and test. We've got the total number of jobs, how many have succeeded, how many have failed, ones that are disabled, the ones that are unknown per environment. And a graph showing what's, how our performance has been over the last month. So coming in in the morning we can see that we've got a number of uh, database servers that we need to look at because they've got failed agent jobs and um, we'll start with the production environment ones so we just click on the server name and it'll open up our agent job detail report so with our um, job detail report open for this server we can see we've got three jobs that have failed because of the red crosses and those are the ones that we need to take action on straight away. We've also got the details of the last time that all of the other jobs were run. 
We have some other reports available, uh, one of which is the database last used. So if we click on that one, we can see that we've got a number of databases that have not been read or written to since the last reboot using the DMVs for the indexes. We also see what time, uh, what date they were rebooted and how many days that is ago and when the last time was that we checked them. So we know how accurate our information is. We sort the ones that have not been written to or read to the top of the report, but we have all the information about any of the other ones as well. Up at the top here, it says click for the servers report. So if we click that one, you can see it comes back with just the servers that have got databases without any reads or writes to the indexes. How many databases on each server, when they were rebooted and when they were last checked and which environment they belong to. And that's how easy it is to install the SSRS reports for the DBA reports.